For this problem, we're going to solve this system of linear equations by using the inverse of the coefficient matrix. So we need to start off by creating matrix A, which is the coefficients. So 3 and 8 is the first row, negative 2 and 8 is the second row. Matrix X is just our variables, so X and Y. And matrix B is our constants on the other side of the equal sign here. And we can see that this matrix equation, A times X equals B, is really just another way of writing this. If we did A times X, we would get in the first row 3X plus 8Y, and saying um, that that's equal to B is saying that 3X plus 8Y equals the first row of B, which is negative 9. And in the second row of A times X would be negative 2X plus 8Y, and since we have equal to B, it's saying that should be equal to what's in the second row of B, which is 16. So this is just a different way to write these two equations. Now we want to find the inverse of matrix A. To do that, we write the coefficient matrix A, and then we put the identity matrix here right next to it. And our goal is to use uh, row, transformation, row transformations, which are discussed in 5.2, to switch it so that this identity matrix is over here, and then whatever is over here is going to be the inverse of A. So first I'm going to do row 2 plus row 1. So just add the second row to the first one. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. 8 plus 8 is 16. 0 plus 1 is still 1. 1 plus 0 gives me a 1. Now I'm going to multiply everything in row 1 by 2 and add it to row 2. And that's going to be my new row 2. So if I double this, I get 2 plus negative 2, that gives me 0. Multiply this by 2, 32 plus 8 gives me a 40. 2 plus 0 gives me a 2, and 2 plus 1 gives me a 3. Now I'm going to divide row 2 by 40, and I'm doing all these steps with the goal of getting this on the left side. Okay, so I started off by getting a 1 here, because I know I needed to have a 1. And then my next operation I did with the goal was to get the 0 there. That's why I did these two steps. So now I have the 1, 0, and it looks like that, 1, 0. So now I just got to make these next two numbers look like this, 0, 1. And that's why I'm dividing row 2 by 40, is so I'm going to get the 1 right here. So 0 divided by 40 stays 0, 40 divided by 40 is 1, and then divide these two numbers by 40, and you get fractions. So now we're at this step, and we have to just change this number to a 0, and we will be done. We're going to need to use addition here, so I'm just going to rewrite these as fractions. 1 can be written as 40 over 40, and I do that so it'll be easier to add the two rows together since the fractions have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to take negative 16 times row 2 and add that to row 1. Negative 16 times 0 is still 0, plus 1, you still get a 1. Negative 16 times a 1 is negative 16. Add that to 16, you get 0. So now we have what we want here. So let's, let's finish doing this. Negative 16 times this is negative 32 over 40. And when you add the fractions, negative 32 and a positive 40 gives you a positive 8. So add the top parts of the fraction. The bottom stays 40. And you have 8 over 40. Negative 16 times 3 is negative 48. Add that to 40 and you get negative 8. So add those top parts, you get negative 8 over 40. So we're done now. We have the identity over here. And all we need to do is reduce, so it's just smaller numbers to work with. Uh, so reduce these fractions down into lowest terms. And this is what you will get. So now that we have the inverse of A, here's the reason that we're going to that we did that and why it works, we have our system of equations. If we multiply by the inverse matrix on the left side and on the right side, the inverse, multiple, the inverse of A multiplied by A just creates the identity. That's the definition of what the inverse is. And then on the right side here, we're going to have the inverse of A times B. Well, any matrix times by the identity just stays the same. So it's just going to be matrix X on the left now. Kind of canceled out the A. 
And so our answers, what we want, remember x is our variables. So our answers, x, is going to be equal to whatever the inverse of a times b is. So we'll have our answers once we do this multiplication. So we take our answer for the inverse of a, and make sure you write that on the at first. It needs to be a left side multiplication, because we did a left, left side multiplication on both sides here. So it needs to be the inverse of a times b, not the other way around, not b and then the inverse of a. Okay, so we write that and multiply it by b, and you just do the row times the column, and you'll get negative 5, and then you do the second row times the column, and you get 3 fourths. And that is equal to x, so we know that the first row of x, whatever variable that was, and it was our x, x equals negative 5, and the second row, which was y, equals 3 fourths. So those, that is our solution.